Hello and welcome to Stockwatch Live. So we know carpets and beds are not top of consumers' wish lists in the current retail climate, as the fate of carpet right has shown, but how about sofas? It might sound like a strangely specific question to ask, but whether shoppers splash out on a sofa or not says a lot. Not just about the state of the sofa retail market, but also consumer sentiment and the wider property market. So results from DFS and SCS should prove interesting. The fact is that when the housing market is buoyant, people tend to spend to create the home they want. Back in 2015, when property was hot, research group Mintel says the UK's 27 million households spent a staggering £27.2 billion on furnishing and improving their homes. But with property sales now subdued and private renting more prevalent, especially among, among under 35s, the question is how this affects the money consumers lavish on their homes. This week we'll get a glimpse at the answer when both DFS Furniture and SCS Group post their full year results. SCS, which apparently stands for Sofa Carpet Specialists, is first up, with 101 stores across the UK from Aberdeen to Plymouth and positioned very much as a value retailer, the company has already warned that the summer heatwave has taken its toll. Just managing to eke out a 0.2% gain in its annual order intake, it said the second half had seen a decline. Like for like orders in the second half of the year to the 28th of July fell 2.6%. However, having seen a 2.2% rise in orders in the first half, it has high hopes that it will remain on track to turn in sales overall in line with the board's expectations. Given the challenging retail environment, shareholders probably shouldn't be expecting miracles, but Broker Peel Hunt hasn't as yet changed its buy rating on the stock or its price target of 250 pence. On Thursday, as I mentioned, we also hear from DFS Furniture. Over the summer, the sofa retailer warned that earnings for the full year would be lower than the £82.4 million seen the year before. That was put down to a fall in sales during the hot summer weather and also, unrelated, delays to made-to-order products from the Far East. But such was the drop-off in summer sales, as would-be customers soaked up the sun instead, that it saw significantly lower orders in the fourth quarter. And that marks a sharp fall from the quarter just before that when sales were tracking above forecast year-on-year figures. For the 23 weeks to the 7th of July, total like-for-like -like revenue is expected to fall about 3% and about 4% over the 49-week period when compared to the same period a year ago. And it looks like that's how it's set to stay for the next 12 months or so, with DFS warning that waning consumer confidence levels will mean the furniture market remains challenging. Shareholders will want to hear whether the recent acquisition of Sophology, which now sits alongside the Dwell and Sofa Workshop brands, has had the anticipated positive impact on the group's bottom line. And they'll also, no doubt, be hoping DFS remains as generous with its dividend payout as it did the last time profits took a downturn. Broker UBS has reiterated its buy investment rating on DFS, but cut its price target from 260 to 245 pence. Staying with retail, and on Wednesday it's the turn of supermarket heavyweight Tesco to post half-year results. It's fair to say that Britain's biggest supermarket chain, for now, has had a torrid time of it of late, what with the horsemeat scandal and then the £250 million accounting scandal tarnishing its name. And all at the same time, of course, as it's had the German discounters relentlessly nipping at its heels. When Chief Executive Dave Lewis joined the company in 2014, he had a tough job on his hands but his turnaround strategy has paid off and the group finished the last year in fine fettle with a 28% jump in profits and its first full year dividend payout to shareholders in three years. With that achieved, not to be beaten by the German discounters Aldi and Lidl, who have carved out a 13% share of the UK grocery market, Tesco has now decided to go head to head with them with the launch of Jack's. It's also dipping a toe back into European markets with a strategic alliance with French group Carrefour around global suppliers, purchasing of own brand products and goods not for resale. Tesco shares which have picked up considerably over the past year but are still down more than 40% on where they were 10 years ago have further to go according to Barclays Capital. Still overweight on the stock, it has raised its price target from 255 to 280 pence. Well, that's all for this week. To find out more about the companies reporting in the week ahead, go to the Markets and Insights section on fidelity.co.uk. See you next time.